Hey everyone, got a new box. I was at a train store a little bit downstate and they had a few locomotives on sale. Um, this one I was able to get for a good price, uh, marked down a little bit from the Lionel price. And in general, it was just a pretty good deal and it was something that I really wanted and needed at the time. Now, this locomotive is a brand new locomotive, of course, and as you've already seen the title and the thumbnail, you'll know that this is a Lionel U36B. This is, of course, one of Lionel's more lower-end models, and it tends to, I guess, be a little lacking on some features. However, there's a severe lack of reviews out there, or professional reviews for cheaper products in the Lionel line. And since not everyone is someone that has a disposable income or retirement savings, I thought I would go in and take a look. Um, the specific version of this I got was, of course, the old UP line. Um, I actually did open up this engine. I didn't run it, but I opened it up to make sure it wasn't just a bunch of rocks. And um, it's not that I don't trust the person I bought this from. It's that I don't trust Lionel itself. <laughs> Let's get this open. But other than some missing pieces of tape that I took off during the initial unboxing, this is pretty much how it comes. Lionel's been making this type of train uh, since the 1970s, so this has been in their product line for a while. Let's get started. We have the instructions, which you should take a read through if you're new to trains, but I already know a lot of this stuff, so I'm just going to dig right into this train. We have the Line Chief Remote, which of course is powered by some batteries. I'll show you how to put those in later. And then we have the locomotive itself, the diesel. Here we are. Let's get this box out of here. We don't need it going to need that if we're going to pack this up and take it somewhere, which is not going to happen for a while. The engine, of course, comes pretty well packed. It's got the foam behind the handrails. And the handrails on this thing are actually metal, which is one thing that I'm noticing straight away. It's a nice quality feature that some of their more lower-end models like the RS3 are missing. All right, here is the engine in all its glory. Before I get to the looks of this thing, we're gonna take a look at how this thing's put together with the mechanism. As soon as we turn it over, as someone that works on trains, mechanically, I am a little disappointed. Um, the mechanism here is mostly plastic gears, which shouldn't be a problem if you don't run this a lot and if you take real good care of it. Um, the trucks I'm noticing are plastic, which is sad. It's not a great feature, but it is, I guess, standard for a cheaper locomotive. Um, of course, it turns all right. It's got a can motor in here, but at least it has two. It has another one in this truck. Uh, all axles are powered and all wheels are powered. It's got the um, rubber band tires or whatever they're called on there, and that should be pretty easy to take on and off. Uh, the base right here is metal. That's a good thing. So it's a mixed bag in terms of reliability. I have had some problems with these drives, with the plastic gears gumming up whenever a ballast gets stuck in there. But if you don't use ballast, or if your ballast is secured down good enough, I would not consider that to be a huge problem. This is a train that you don't really want to play with too hard, because of course the trucks are plastic, they're very soft, and uh, over time they'll get brittle, and they may crack and then it'll look ugly and you won't want to run it so uh it's not you know critical to the engine that the trucks are in good shape but you should probably refrain from crashing this one a whole lot moving on to how this thing looks it's a interesting locomotive some people would find this ugly with the sort of snub nose but i think it looks all right um it's definitely a freighter by design um, got the nice we can handle it thing there and then we have the number under that uh, we have the Pacific logo up front looks pretty cool we got the lighting up here those are LEDs and then we got some an engineer and the assistant engineer in the cab 
Um, we got a horn up here. Three bells on that horn. Don't know exactly what kind of horn that is, but it's all right. Uh, the paint detail is minimal, but it looks all right. It's well done. The yellow is spot on. I see trains like this all the time, uh, Union Pacific, and the colors look very close. Uh, of course, we got that written on the side. Um, that's the earlier version of the Union Pacific paint scheme before they just had an American flag on the side. And then around the back, uh, pretty similar, but if we turn this over, we'll see a lot of handrails, good detail. It's all molded in though, but that's to be expected with a model of this price point. We have number boards, which I don't know if those are illuminated or not. And these better be illuminated. They are the reverse headlights. Um, which you probably, with this type of locomotive, you'd want to run it in both directions. Here's the Line Chief remote. I have put in the batteries. Those are AAA batteries. And of course, you're going to want to use a Phillips head screwdriver to get that in and out. I am using a flat head here. It works fine. Um, but usually you'd want to use a Phillips. And do, do as I say, not as I do, you know. But here we can see remote works. That's great. Okay, let's get this baby on a roll. So, turn on the transformer. Uh, if you have a transformer, you're going to want to set it to 18 volts. That is the recommended voltage for Lion Chief trains. Let's turn on the remote. That was an alright startup. Could have been better, but eh. It's a low-end engine, so don't expect much. Let's try out the horn. Have a right control over that. See the bell? Alright, now for a test that will determine uh, a large amount of the score for the sound on this locomotive, and that is, can you overlap the bell and the horn? No, you cannot. That is a little disappointing. It really kind of takes you out of the experience when you're running a train and you do that. But it's a minor nitpick, if anything. Um, I really wish Lionel would actually, you know, uh, fix that because it doesn't seem like too hard of a thing to fix, but oh well. Let's listen to some of the crew talk. Decently realistic there. Um, know some people hate um, crew talk stuff or something like that with all their guts. Um, I'm indifferent to it. Eh, I, I could go without it. But it's alright to have. It's a neat feature to have. And let's see how this thing rolls. Pretty smooth. To listen to the rolling announcements. So they're not super repetitive. Um, they have realistic little beeps and boops that you hear on the radio. Um, it's all right. I would say that that is definitely a good feature. Um, I don't mind it. Of course, the lighting, as you saw, was directional. And as you can probably see back there, it's lighting up the bridge over there. So it does have reverse lighting as well. It rolls smoothly. It probably pulls pretty well, judging from the fact there's two motors. Uh, it stops a little suddenly, but I wouldn't put it past this engine because, of course, 
It's got those cheaper motors and a cheap drive. All right, to wrap up this review, I would definitely say this locomotive is worth purchasing if you want to expand your fleet and you're more of a beginner. Um, uh, you might be more impressed with it than I was if you're a beginner because I noticed things like the fact that you can't overlap some sounds, uh, which was a little bit of a bummer for me, but it, you know, it doesn't um, make it a deal breaker. I forgot to mention the price on this thing. I managed to get this thing for $234, which is more than I usually pay for stuff because I always get stuff used and beat up but for a new engine that's about as good as you're gonna get in today's economy let's be completely honest um, of course it's not the best quality uh, the mechanism as I pointed out and some of the material choices are a bit questionable however with maintenance and if you you know use it on the right track conditions and you take good care of it this locomotive will serve you well I am sure of it and I do like the metal base and handrails, it's a nice feature. The plastic ones sometimes tend to snap off. These ain't going nowhere. Um, of course, the graphics are great. Um, I would give the graphics on this locomotive a definite 10 out of 10. It does all the things it needs to do. It's not overly detailed uh, for the price point, but it gets the job done. It looks like what it's supposed to, and it's all clean and crisp and professionally done. In terms of the sound, I would give it a 7. The sound quality for some things aren't great. Um, I don't like that you can't overlap things, and uh, you know, there's things that kind of bug nerds like me. The lighting I would give 10 out of 10. It's all it needs to be, like, I, like a lot of things, and of course it's bright and it looks good. I will give the mechanism a 5 out of 10. It's not the best mechanism and uses a lot of plastic. Uh, the motors are down in the trucks, which is never a good thing. But I suppose if they wanted to have two motors in this thing, they kind of had to do that because um, the way this thing's set up, this is a very skinny body on the engine. It would be harder to engineer that, and this is a cheap locomotive. So don't expect over-engineering with this thing. Overall, I would give this locomotive a 7 out of 10. It's all it needs to be for sure, but it does have some features that would kind of contradict the lower, I guess, more entry-level price point, because I would expect less features, but the same level of quality. Um, it's, this is less features and a little bit less quality parts. Um, Lionel, you're not watching this, I'm sure, but if I was to give one recommendation, it would be to pop some metal gears on these suckers, and that will greatly increase these things reliability because it can just crush up any loose bits of ballast or anything with these plastic gears they might crack over time so buyer beware in terms of the mechanism but if you're going to take good care of this thing i wouldn't worry of course i went for the old up line for this locomotive but if you want to see a review on the csx variant of this locomotive uh, my friend o arthur over at ogage trains plus slot cars he did a little review on it, and he owns it. Uh, he could probably tell you about it. I'm sure it's not much different, but uh, I think the sounds and some of the features are a tiny bit different. But not much else to say in terms of that. Let's close out with this locomotive pulling a nice freight train.